Hey guys, it's Sutania here, and today I'm going to be talking about the Jaguar, which is a Mimitar assault frigate. The Jaguar, in my opinion, is kind of in the middle of the road of assault frigates. I think the NU, Harpy, and Hawk are probably the best three right now, and the three that really work right now. The Jaguar is still an okay ship, I just feel like it's a, a bit below where the other, the other three that I just mentioned are. So this is a Jaguar fit that I'm using. I'm running a free 200mm auto cannons. I think this fit could be improved upon a bit maybe with some experimentation. With, uh, if you can somehow get like a named rocket launcher in here with maybe like adjusting like one of these other modules down CPU it might be a bit better. Um, I got a Tech 2 afterburner, a Republic Fleet medium should extend a compact web and a faint scram. And then I've just got Tech 2 damage control, double Tech 2 gyros, and a small ancillary armor repairer. You might think this is kind of weird to run medium shield extender and the small ancillary armor repairer. But I actually found it to be quite nice. It's kind of like the dual rep breacher. The small, an small ancillary is just so effective. I think it's one of the most um, like slot and fitting uh, efficient modules. It's just so powerful. So just like the dual rep breacher, you don't really get punished by fitting this here. You you don't really have anything better to put in the fourth mid slot, and it fits really nicely there, and it can catch a lot of people out. And it's quite quite nice, especially with the assault figure resist. If someone's shooting EM or thermal at you, the uh, small artillery just makes a huge difference. And I've just got some double. Uh, Tech 2 shield rigs, got a kinetic rig to plug uh, the kinetic hole, and then just a uh, core defense field extender here. It'll be interesting maybe to go with a, a burst aerator too. Um, the, the problem with the Jaguar, in my opinion, is that the DPS on it is absolute trash. Um, the Jaguar has four bonuses to damage. Every single bonus on the Jaguar is damage related, yet it has horrible DPS because it. it, it it, it does less, it does almost less DPS than a Republic Fleet Firetail, basically, um, <laughs> despite having four damage bonuses. So, as you can see, you know, cold, it do doesn't even break 200 DPS with double gyro. I mean, I could be running maybe a burst aerator instead of this second CDFE for the extra tank, but uh, it just feels so bad just to have such horrible DPS on a ship that is just all about DPS and its bonuses. It's also one of the reasons why I really dislike the Retribution too. In fact, this actually does identical DPS to a Claw. So you, you don't get any more DPS out of a, a Jag than a Claw. Um, also, it feels this uh, optimal range bonus feels really bad in my opinion. Uh, the Wolf is already the better artillery Kaita. And it, that has the fall of bonus, so the Jaguar is more of an sort of AC auto cannon brawler in most fits. Yeah, you can scribe, uh, scram kite with it with artillery. You can make an artillery kiting fit, but I feel like it just pales in comparison to the Sepo and the Wolf in those roles. So you're kind of just left with that 10% optimal range bonus. It doesn't benefit auto cannons whatsoever. So that's kind of what I hate about the Jaguar. What's good about the Jaguar though is it's actually really fast. In fact, the, the speed that the Jaguar goes is probably the speed that every assault frigate should go. The Jaguar breaks a 1k a second uh, cold with an afterburner. Most assault frigates can't even break 700. The Jaguar also goes around to 2.6k a second. So it's the only assault frigate that's actually faster than an Interdictor, the, the Saber. So it's very usable in that regard. I guess I guess the Jaguar is kind of similar to the Stabber. Also, the Jaguar has like a very uh, flexible slot layout. You know, four low, four mid. Whereas every other assault frigate only has seven lows and mids. So you have a few more options on the Jaguar. You could maybe do like dual pop control with like an armor tank. There's a lot of things you can fit on the Jaguar. But the main weakness of the Jag here is you know just how poor the DPS is. And that's sort of what I'm trying to rectify with this double gyro fit. Um, so I am running an afterburner only fit here. And I, just, I found that uh, it was acceptable. I was roaming in pure blind and f fade. And I know the area quite well and it's not really camped so much. 
most of the uh, PvP just happens like in select systems, and the gates aren't often that camped aside from like the horde rallying pocket. So I was able to get away with the afterburner without getting punished too heavily by gate camps. But it is a consideration. You could uh, fit a micro warp drive here if you fit a two percent power grid implant. And then you uh, drop this for a compact micro warp drive, and then drop down this damage control down to a named damage control if that's really what you want. I also think it might be efficient to uh, maybe drop this down to a compact afterburner, and then plug in a named uh, rocket launcher here because, like, like I said, like DPS is kind of the number one concern that you have on this ship. But yeah, Jaguar is quite fun. I definitely would recommend the NU Harpy and Hawk over the Jaguar. But you can have some spawn, especially with the Afterburner catching people out. It's still quite fast with the Afterburner. It goes 1.4k at a second with heat. So again, you can kind of make it back to gates. You can catch, you can catch out cruisers. Uh, the, the small ancillary, like plus medium citizen, is quite nice bait too. You actually have a lot of effective hit points. 12.2k... EHP plus whatever you get back from the small ancillary is really nice. The Jagger also has a really nice uh, regeneration too. Uh, you can see here the regen 16 HP a second, but then that's also uh, like with your multiplied by your resists. So th this Jagger actually just passive tanks, you know, like 40 50 DPS, which is nice again too. That's like half an ancillary that like, running right there. So you, you just got like. A really nice regeneration, really nice EHP, and it's a really fun ship to fly, despite the the frustrating lack of DPS for a ship before damage bonuses, and one bonus that's often wasted, which is the optimal range bonus. So anyway, I hope you have some fun. Uh, I'll, I recorded some clips, and I guess I'll do them in the same style as the Hawk video, just sort of explain my thoughts on the engagements. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. So this fight is just kind of standard. Uh, I jump into this gate here and I see that there is a Sabre on the gate. Now, I, I would imagine a Sabre would probably want to engage me here, but I do have kind of a bad damage type for a Sabre. I have EMP loaded. It really sucks to shoot EMP into a Sabre, especially on armor. Even though Sabres don't have much armor normally, uh, you know, having to shoot through like 75% EM resist just sucks so much. So I reapproach the game, see what he does, and I opt to reload to phase plasma, which is a much better neutral damage type for a Sabre. I think fusion would also be an acceptable damage type. Both of them seem to perform about the same, although fusion does go through armor a bit faster, so sometimes fusion can be better. I start, you know, shooting the dude with one gun. Because he was very hesitant to engage, so I start shooting him with one gun to make him to make him feel like maybe my damage is ho horrible. He jumps out here, uh, which I guess uh, is to be expected. Maybe sometimes Sabers just run away. Maybe he's just a gate camper, but uh, I get he could also be checking the other side of the gate, and I guess that's what he ends up doing. I am in Goon Swarm, so maybe he assumes that I ha that I have a gang or something with me, and he's just you know checking it out. To, to make sure I don't have any backup, and of course I don't, so he comes back through. And he knows that my, well, he think he might think that my DPS is bad, because I used the, I only showed him one of my guns. I didn't show the other two on him. And I do the same thing here until he actually aggroes. I keep the one gun on him, and then I just put the second gun on as soon as he aggroes. So now that I've got, you know, the pure DPS, and then we just start brawling. Uh, in this fight, I want to stay at one kilometer from the Saber. I'm using Keep It Range 1K because the Saber has a fall off bonus and I do not. So uh, I, I need to be as close to him as possible so that I, I, my DPS doesn't get wasted while his DPS is still coming through. So Saber could potentially win if he uh, was at like 7 or 8K and abused the fall off bonus. But yeah, I'm able to uh, you know kill this guy. I've got just got better. EHP than him, he has better DPS than me, but he, he gets me into like low armor before he dies. With the, I still have the uh, small ancillary and the damage control ready. But yeah, this is kind of just the typical thing that you get in a Jaguar. A lot of people will actually fight you because Jaguar is considered to be quite weak, I think. Especially since I've killed a few of them in Tech 1 Frigates a lot. 
So this is a, uh, a pretty fun fight. Uh, just to give you a bit of context about the this fight in this pocket, uh, I'm in this Modus Angels like triangle that's at like the east side of Declan, and they're camping me in. They have Orphra, Saber, Eris, uh, a few other ships that are just camping me in, and then this Stalker guy is like following me around. So I took him to a gate that was 34 AU away from the gate that they were camping the other side, and then I jumped through here trying to act scared so that maybe he would go for me and see if he will fight and hopefully I can k maybe kill this stork before his friends uh, can arrive. I know that he has an MJD because he used it, he warped to 100 to gain and used it to come down so I know it's on cooldown although that's not really relevant since I have a scram and a web but uh, I know at least one of his mids so I know he hopefully can't be that tanky although he does actually end up being uh, quite tanky. So. I notice he doesn't have a web and he's using rage here and I'm, I'm quite conflicted on what I want to do um, at the start I'm just like kind of sitting on him at zero which I think is where I actually had to be uh, this guy actually ended up being like a uh, shield power relay fit you can see that he's kind of like act, like passive tanking a bit and like I'm actually on a time uh, I'm on a timer here in this fight right like they've got the Orphrus, they've got that Saber, they've got that Eris, and whatever else they had in their gate camp that's camping me in. And I need to kill this guy as, as quickly as possible, like, before, like, he can tell them that he needs help, and then they warp, like, 37 AU to the gate and jump in. So, you know, although, you know, I can orbit him at, you know, 2.5k with my AB on, and, like, he won't do, he'll lose, like, you know, a third of his DPS, because I have an afterburner, and he doesn't have a web. But what I really need to be doing is just sitting on this guy at zero. And and I realize that, like, kind of mid-fight, that I just need to be on top of this guy. Like, you know, I'm I'm playing to win the duel, but I'm not planning to, like, kill this guy uh, and get out. And, you know, I still do have the armor rep, and he is using Inferno on me, which I do have a pretty decent uh, armor resist to. I have 73% armor resist based on the Jaguar. So I can tank this guy for quite a while on the incinerator. And it might bait him into like sticking around, or maybe he thinks he can win and not call his friends. So you just saw a local got by two. And there's also a gate fire. Uh, so this guy's got bringing in his friends now, and I just need to like kill this guy as fast as possible. Luckily, they're quite slow with decloaking. I'm not sure if he thought that I don't know he could one v one me, and he told them to like sort of not decloak yet or something because he doesn't want him to steal his one v one kill because he wasn't really like expecting the ancillary and now this is the uh the, the problem with the afterburn not only jaguar is it's pretty hard to get away from these situations so they have an eris and a stero there's an orphrus and a saber incoming from somewhere else i imagine because that's what they had in their camp i'm able to get away from this eris he doesn't rebubble luckily if he rebubbled there would have died to the saber and you know the orphrus that eventually he would have brought in but yeah that that was a, a pretty cool fight and I guess that kind of shows like some decision making when it comes to doing max DPS or, you know, mitigating DPS in that situation. So here is another saber fight. I hit record as soon as the fight started. I went into a mining pocket and then this guy was like waiting on a gate for me and followed me around a bit. So I decided to engage him, and he wanted to fight. Uh, this saber fight's a lot lot closer, and I think this guy could could have actually killed me. Uh, because he had EMP loaded, which doesn't do great against Jaguar armor, whereas if he had Fusion or Hail, I think he would have killed me, especially since uh, my, I have a lower resist to explosive than I have to EM on my shields too. So the EMP here, I think, actually cost this save by five, but he has a much better fit, this guy, um, than the other one. It's like a uh, double medium shield extender instead of medium shield extender plus MSAB, and he has like more aggressive low slots like Gyros. So as you can see, like it's a much closer fight. But my strategy in this fight is the exact same. I'm just going to try and stay on top of this guy as best as I actually can. Just to make sure he doesn't abuse his falloff bonus against me, since I don't have one. Uh, in theory, you could maybe try and abuse your uh, your your like lower sig tracking, tracking, but the Saber has a really good tracking bonus as well. Saber gets 50% tracking, you only have 375 so... I don't know, you, it probably just seems like a waste to orbit. Unless you expect him to like have hail loaded or something, then it's probably a waste. You're probably just better off sitting at zero like that. 
Um, yeah, that, that was a good fight. That was much closer. I think if he had a fusion load into the MP, he may, may have even killed me. This is a fight with a rapid like Caracal. Now, you can actually kill rapid like Caracals in a Jaguar. I actually got really confident in, in engaging them because with the afterburner, many rapid like Caracal fits don't. They, they're really overtanked, but they don't have a web. And you can mitigate so much of their DPS with the afterburner only. So I got really confident in engaging them. Uh, I almost killed like three Caracals, but the Caracals are always with like other dudes and they take so long to die that they're really annoying. But uh, one cool thing about Caracals is that they very often have uh, really poor damage types. Uh, this Caracal in particular is shooting me with Mjolnir missiles, which is great for me because I have almost 80% EM resist on my shields. But then I also have 92% EM resist on my armor with the small ancillary. Uh, so this guy is in a bit of a weird rapid like Caracal, though I have been engaging rapid like Caracals for the past half an hour or so. So I guess this guy like reshipped a hard count to me or something. He uh, changed to like an armor caracal with scram and dual web, which is kind of an interesting fit. I think if he had a better damage type, maybe he would have been able to kill me if he was shooting Nova at me or something instead. Who knows, but I kind of immediately identified that it's a, uh, an armor caracal and I re reloaded to hail as soon as his uh, sh shields were down. I think it definitely was worth the 10 second reload there, especially since uh, caracals have 45% base thermal resistance because it's a tech one Kodari ship. So, you know, I'm orbiting him here, but it's not really making a difference because, you know, rapid lights and dual web. And at this point, I've uh, survived his reload clip, so it's the fight's over. But that's also another area where the small ancillary is just so good, because if anyone has uh, EM missiles loaded, like, your small ancillary can just tank them. Whereas, like, with the passive regen, maybe, like, a longer fight like that, maybe they can, like, slowly break through you. But just having the sustain is really nice. Uh, small ancillary actually... Like counters rapid lights pretty nicely too because you can just uh, you know reload when they start reloading and then you've got maybe enough shield and armor buffer to to like get past the additional twenty five seconds. But yeah, I definitely recommend you try uh, rapid light caracals because again, just check for the damage type. If they shoot thermal or EM at you, I mean, I would definitely try it because it's definitely possible if they are shooting a, a bad damage type of you especially and especially if they don't have a web and you can just heat a b and get around them but yeah anyway i hope this video is nice you know i normally don't fly afterburners and i probably wouldn't recommend it to newer players because you kind of need to know uh, where to go and not get killed by bubble camps because if you jump into a decent camp you will die with just an afterburner fit most of the time and that might be quite frustrating for you but yeah, the Jaguar is kind of an interesting ship. I wish it had more damage and maybe a better bonus in place of the optimal range bonus. But yeah, it's fun a fun ship to fly and uh, hope you have as much fun with the Jaguar as uh, I did.